Hey guys, welcome back to the Cast of Spear podcast. My name is John, and today we have back on the show Ted Hardy from Immersion Freediving. Today we are going to be covering a lot of different things around shallow water blackout. Welcome back to the show, Ted. Excellent. Uh, thanks for having me on. I look forward to talking about one of my most favorite subjects. Well, let me let me get this straight. So if if I'm gonna be you know, getting a shallow water blackout, am I going to kind of like feel my body start changing as I'm coming up? Or is it something that just hits somebody out of the blue? So this is something that I think is the the core of why most people don't give enough consideration to free diving safety and blackout. And, and here, here's what I mean about this. Everyone who's listened to this podcast, every student I've ever had, has at some point gone and held their breath. And maybe they want to see how long they can hold their breath for. And if you do that, if you've ever done that, here's what you will notice. In the beginning, it feels kind of nice, right? There's actually a part that's somewhat pleasant. I tell my students, you better enjoy that because it's going to become not fun later. Uh, but at some point, you know, it feels nice, feels pleasant. You don't feel any urge to breathe, right? It feels nice. Uh, and then at some point, depending on how, you know, tuned up your pre physiology is, at some point, the first thing that people feel that's like shows that it's not something's not right is they feel urged to they feel urged to swallow right and they'll feel maybe one or two of those and then they're going to get what's called a contraction right so a contraction is the diaphragm actually it's actually trying to make you it's trying to make you force you to take a breath right and we as free divers right we feel those contractions and we go, mm -mm, not yet, right? In a minute, maybe, but but not not yet. And so then that contraction goes away. And then the contraction comes back. And you feel, mm, right? And then it goes away. And then it comes back. But then it's a little stronger. And you feel, mm, right? And, it, and, and the contractions, they get faster and faster and stronger and stronger, right? At some point, you're like, oh, my God. It's all, it's all, all the CO2 you can handle. It's all the fun you can have today. And you take a breath, right? So if you were to, and I, I always do this in my class, I, if you were to graph this out, what you would what you would see in the graph is something that people would say, Ted, this is so stupid. Intuitively, I understand that. What you would see is that the longer that you hold your breath, the more uncomfortable it gets. And it's a perfect linear 45 degree line, right? If you were to graph it out, you just you'd be like, all right, Ted, why did you draw all that? That's so stupid. Like, of course, I mean, we all know that. And so yeah, that's it's, it's self-evident, and everyone who's ever held their breath understands that. And what happens is they make a super reasonable assumption. That's totally not true. It's not true. They assume that when I dive in the ocean, I will feel that same thing. I'll feel that slow, steady increase in urges to breathe. But you don't. You do not, right? It has to do with the pressure, right? The partial pressure, right? The whole physics thing, right? What happens when you're diving in the ocean as you can, you can be coming up from a dive, feel fine, and then black out, right? So if your buddy is 50 feet down the reef, you know, oh, look at that, they saw that hogfish and they're chasing, chasing after the hogfish, you black out underwater, most spear fishermen are overweighted, you're just going to sink to the bottom of the ocean and there's going to be yet another preventable, easily preventable uh, spearfishing fatality, right? And so... That, that's just the one thing I want people to understand is you can feel fine, right? I've got video footage. I, we'll put a link to the show notes uh, of a, was the, the best spearfishing blackout I have um, on, on, on footage. And I've also got a video from Ashley Chapman, who Ren, Ren and Ashley, the people that filmed this video, the, on an old live show I did called TED Talks Freediving, me and Ashley told the story of what was act, what actually happened on there. So you can see Ashley discussing it. You can see, you know, the actual blackout video. But th the thing is, people just don't, they don't, they don't believe that. Now, the, the thing is, is why does that happen? Why, why do you, why can you feel fine uh, moments before a blackout? But yet if you're, you're saying if I hold your breath on dry land, you feel the slow, steady increase, right? So the, the reason that is, is rather technical, but it has to do with the, uh, the, the, the partial pressure of oxygen. So the partial pressure of oxygen in your body is largely determined by the depth that you're at, right? So when we're deep, we have actually higher partial pressure of oxygen than, than if you're sitting on the couch holding your breath, right? But as we ascend, it goes the other way. And so it's that last 15 feet to the surface where the partial pressure of oxygen drops extremely rapidly. And that's why you can 
you'll find them black out. So Mandy, Mandy, uh, who's the Mandy Ray Crookshank, uh, I worked with uh, for many years. She's a, she was a PFI instructor. She and Kirk started performance free diving. She's a competitive free diver. And this sounds weird to say, but it, it is. She's had eight uh, blackouts in her uh, competitive career for, you know, 15 years. Six of them, she felt completely fine. She had no idea that anything was wrong. All she knows is she's coming up from the dive. She's got the tag in her hand. She's like, Ooh, I just broke another world record. And then she wakes up in Kirk's arm and she's like, get the hell off me. What are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Right? So this is Mandy, a, a, a seven time world record holder had no idea that blackouts were coming. I mean, maybe your, maybe your, your physiology is, you know, maybe you're more in tune with your body than Mandy. Uh, but I don't, I don't think so. And so here's the, the, the final argument that I'll make. So I guess I know it's hard to convince people. They're just like, no, I'd, I'd feel it. You know, no, you won't, but fine. Let's say you are genetically gifted. You're genetically superior to all the other free divers out there. And you have a built-in blackout sensing device. So you're coming up from your 60 foot dive, you got your fish on the line, right? And, you're, and your blackout sensing device goes, you're gonna black out in two seconds. How does that help you in any way? I mean, what does, oh, yeah, I'm about to be dead. Like even, it, it doesn't help. The, the only thing that helps is someone at the surface who you trust to be there, who you trust as they see a fish go by will stay there and that you know has the skills to, to rescue you. So, I mean, that's, that's, what, that's what you gotta do. So if somebody blacks out, they are properly weighted, they're hanging at the surface, their face is down though, and their body is not as close as they should be. How long do they have to be flipped on their back? Like, do you, is there, or is it like instant death? No, 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 no. Thank God, no. Um, I, I've seen many. So, but so, I'll let you go. so first off, you, you're going to be either face up or face down. And if you're face up, that's obviously. I'm thinking if you're by yourself, you hope you you end up face up. You have to be weighted the right way, which most people aren't. But anyway, so it's a better answer to your question, right? So you're face up, you're face down. Your buddy isn't right there, uh, and the buddy heads over. Once you have uh, once you have blackout, you've got and again, this is you know this is you've got at maximum two minutes before you're going to take terminal gas, right? So what happens is when you black out, before you blacked out, your body, like, I mean, think about it. When you're, when you're coming up from a hard dive, most people are going to be having <clears throat> contractions, right? Your body's trying to say, hey, you should take a breath. And then you, who is in charge, says, no, that would be really bad. I'm underwater. I'm not going to listen to you and take a breath, right? But once the person blacks out, the body is smart. Uh, one of the things the body says is it, it turns off consciousness because that's the oxygen affording luxury that we can't afford right now. And it says, you know what? We might be underwater. So we're going to stop with this urges to breathe because if we take a breath right now, we might have a bad outcome, right? So you're kind of in that holding phase and you're going to stay like that for a maximum of two minutes. And after two minutes, whether you're face down, face up, on the bottom, whatever, the body says, hey, like we can't stay like this indefinitely. We got to take a breath. It might be water, might be air. I don't know. And you take terminal gas, right? Unfortunately, most of the time that's going to be face down on the bottom and they find gravel and rocks in the lungs, right? Because they're face down in the sand and they poof, take a breath. Uh, so you've got a maximum of two minutes. The good news is I have seen, I, I was telling someone, I think it was maybe Jeremy Gamble from Sphere Magazine, but I, I was, I, I've, I've seen more blackouts than, than most people. And it's not because I've seen hundreds of blackouts in person. Obviously, as an instructor for 12 years in freedom competitions, I've seen blackouts. But I bet I've seen more on YouTube than the average person. I, I watch all these videos right now. It's like, I, I, anyway, I, they're almost all handled horribly. And the person's fine, right? I mean, so the good news is the, 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 you just got to be there, right? So I, Kirk used to always say this. He goes, look, if you, if, you, if you have a blackout, like you took the class, you know how to do everything perfectly, but it's like 10 years from now, and you're like, what did that guy say? I know I'm supposed to do something. If you forget it all, grab the person by the top of their hair and just pull their hair out of the water. The number one rule is protect the airway. It's the water in the lungs that kills us every time. It's not the, it's not the blackout, it's the water in the lungs. So if you, if, you, if you don't have no idea what you're doing, just keep that head out of the water. Right, to keep the head out of the water. Obviously, in a free diving classroom, there's some better techniques. If you go to freedivingsafety.com, you can see it. But we teach them to put them on the back, take the mask off, blow across the eyes. But the main thing is keep that airway, that the mouth and the nose, out of the water, and they're going to be good. 
One last question I have is, are you able to weight yourself so that if you did black out, for, for example, you have a higher probability of, of flipping over so your face is out of the water? Uh, the weighting isn't going to determine that, right? I mean, you can, I mean, obviously the way I teach my, you know, teach people the way I talked about in the last episode is how to weight yourself so that you're absolutely going to end up at the surface. You can absolutely weight yourself so that you will end up at the surface. But now, like, you know, because I know people say that, well, Ted, if, I, if I'm weighted your way, like I'll be at the server, so I'll be fine if I black out. Well, now you're 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 risking your life on if you end up face up or face down, <laughs> right? I mean, like if you flip want to a coin, up, right? <laughs> um, now they are things. I mean, so like Terry Moss has a a, a vest that uh, deploys. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, and I actually had me test it. I tested it out. Um, it's gotten much better than, than, than it was years ago. It's much more streamlined, right? He wanted a competitive free diver to test it, to see how streamlined it was. And it was very streamlined. Um, but what it does is if you black out, it will shoot you up to the surface and it will put you in that face up uh, position, right? So that's, that's pretty good. Um, the, you know, my opinion on the on that vest is it's better than nothing. Uh, if you if you dive in the team and wear the vest, of course I love it because it, it, it gives you more uh, safety. But there are some definite holes to that thing that I think a lot of people don't understand. And that, without getting all of the whole details, the bulk the bulk of it is that thing basically it sets off if you hit the surface and then you and then you sink down. Right? So if you if you hit the surface and you black out, then you're going to sink down to the bottom. Right. And so it says, hey, you shouldn't be sinking. So it, it sends the vest off and shoots you to the surface. I'm weighted right. If I black out, I'm not going to sink. So that vest isn't going to fire for me. Right. So it's almost like to use it properly, you have to be overweighted. <laughs> um, so that, but, but, but the bottom line is that is a useful tool. It's better than nothing. It's not nearly as good as a, as a, as a, as a safety team. But if you use a safe team and you use that, then how, how do I have a problem with that? Perfect. I think we'll stop there. If you guys want to find, Ted, make sure you go look at all the socials at ImmersionFD. Go to freedivingsafety.com. Make sure you take that course if you haven't taken any kind of safety course. Make sure you check out his podcast, Free Dive Live. And tomorrow we have Ted back, and we're going to be chatting about Valsalva versus Frenzel equalization. Thanks for being on the show, Ted. Hey, one more thing before you go. Do you find yourself watching YouTube as much as I do? I think it's replaced my TV, to be honest. Well, if so, check out the Cast and Spear YouTube channel. We're trying to put up good tips and tricks that we learn as we get better at fishing and spearfishing. And we'd love for you to subscribe and leave a comment. We'll see you there.